What's up, guys? How are you guys doing? Are you guys okay? Can you guys hear me? Good? Hello, Daisuk, how are you? <laughs> yeah, go, keep testing, go, feel, feel free to do your tests. Fala, Carlos, beleza, cara? Boa noite. Como é que você tá? Certinho? All right, thank you, Daisuk, thank you very much. Tudo certo, tudo na paz. Trabalhando bastante. What's up, Frank? How are you? Good to see you here again. Fala, Doug. Tudo bom, cara? Como é que você tá? Tudo certinho? Como é que vocês estão aí? Todo mundo bem? Todo mundo tranquilo? Hoje eu vou. Yeah, so today I'm going to continue with the. Uh, actually, I'm almost finishing this model, so I think that today it's going to be the the last day that we are going to have this model over here. So yeah, I'm going to do some adjusts, and uh, I would like I, I I also would like to show you guys some. <coughs> some things that I did on the model since the last since the last stream so yeah and try to show you guys how I did some of the the props on the character uh, and I also end up doing the hair using a deformer on the uh, with the transpose I use a deformer to create this hair and it worked pretty well. I, I used the same technique that I did to create the, the pipes on, on the babe capsule and stuff. I'm gonna show you guys how I did that. And I also, I would like to show you guys, uh, I did a little hinder test. That's not going to be the final result, but I did like this test. I'd like to show you guys. Um, so yeah um i think we are almost in the end of with with this one um and i did this test just to feel how the model was looking and to see with the shaders and stuff so i did this hanger but once i finished the the model with the right topology and stuff um I'm gonna do a collab with a uh, with a friend of mine that's going to do the he he's he's going to rig this character so this character will be like you will be able to animate this character uh, and yeah so but in terms in terms of modeling and and shape design and things like that I think um I'm pretty happy with the result right now so. Today I'm going to adjust some things and show you guys how I did some of the other stuff. And yeah. And after that, next week we're probably going to work on something new. Uh, I'm still planning how how to do or what to do. But yeah. So after that, uh, I will do the textures and hangers and stuff of this model, like offline and then I bring this back to show you guys how it's looking so yeah let me close this so here it is yeah so I, I did some some work since the last since the last stream uh, I refined some forms and some shapes 
And now we also have some props. Uh, let me put the concept art of uh, the original concept art for, from the artist here to pay some tributes to him. So this this character that I'm working right now, it's it was made by Adam Tazi, and you guys can look you guys can look him on his uh, Instagram and his social medias and stuff. So. Fala, Doug. Be oh, cara, legal. Que bom que você vai acompanhar aí, cara. Valeu. Que bom que você tá curtindo o modelo. And... Yeah, yeah, that's it. Spirit, spirit away. That's exactly. Or stranded away. Or spirited away. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a super nice concept and a very, very good uh, insight on, the, on both those you know, those words, you know, the from Shihiro and Death Stranding. So, yeah, I I, I, I was super excited when I see, when I saw this, this concept and I thought I really wanted to do the 3D character of this. And yeah, I'm, I'm kind of happy with the result. I just, I, I did some, some things different from the concept. Uh, as you guys can see, I, I changed the position of the other track here, and I put I put it on the her left shoulder instead of the, her right shoulder. I think it I think it's better on the on the composition for the 3D model, and I also create a bunch of props that we don't have on the on the illustration. So I I, I basically tr tried to emulate the the assets that we have on the on some character from Death Stranding, like his backpack and the battery, the battery and the, you know, he, he has like this capsule that, that captures the, that golden stuff that there is on the game. So yeah. And I put the other track, like a couplet, like on, on the backpack like this. So yeah, I did this props and some of the props that she's gonna use to put the boxes and things like this so yeah and i also did a little bit of i changed a little bit the cloth uh and i had i, I used some zbrush cloth brush to create some kind of folds here especially where things got got a little bit stretched you know because of the boots and the gloves and things like this so yeah and I I also add this those you know like those gear to, that 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 gear to hold the, hold up the baby capsule and yeah but the thing that I think that I I advanced the most was 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 the hair so I create this hair I, I tried I tried to emulate uh, as best as I could the kind of anime feel you know for the hair like making the the hair coming all all the way along from the top of the head and then going to the front front side of the face and then i try to keep the some kind of you know movement here in the right place and i'm gonna show you guys how i did this and i never did something like this in like in this way and it actually was quite easy to do. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. So let me read to the comments. Um, thank you, Daisuk. Thank you very much. I'm glad you. I'm glad you're enjoying the the model. Uh, thank you, Frank. Uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, it's. It's almost finished right now. I um, just need to add some some more details, and I, I actually have like one miss, missing part that I still need to put on this character. That it, it is the like the baby inside of the pod. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna create this with you guys today, like the some kind of creature that's going to 
be in, inside of this baby capsule here. So yeah, thank you, Frank. I appreciate it. Uh, fala, Carlos Santana. Tudo beleza, cara? Como é que você tá? Tudo certo. Tamo, tamo aí. Mais um dia streamando essa parada. Tamo nessa. So, yeah, so let, let's jump to the... Uh, I also would like to show you guys the, the topology for this. It's quite clean, as you guys can see. It's very, very simple topology to create this, this shape. And I recently I bought the, the Death Stranding Art book, so it was quite easy to find reference for this project. And what I try to do here, I create like a like a very simplified version of the real model from the game, you know, like a very with very basic shapes. I was able to create this uh, this other track here. I think that's the name of this thing. I I can remember. So yeah, as you guys can see, it's a it's it's a very clean, very clean model with very very good topology, and everything was done here in ZBrush using Z Modeler. And I used the same techniques that I already showed you guys. So everything like very basic primitives and together they, they kind of form this complex shape. It's not that complex, but you guys got the idea. And with the same techniques, I create the, the battery and, you know, this capsule here. So as you guys can see, every, uh, the topology is very clean and I will be able to use this very, this very topology on the, like on the final model, the Higgins version of the model. So that was some of the details that I add. I also add some kind of like some nice touch for the, for the cloth, as you guys can see here, and like an inside part of the hood and color and you no, know, a bunch of details just to give a little bit more information to the, to the cloth part. You know, so yeah. So let me let me show you guys a little bit the the hair and how I did it. So as you guys can see, this is like a very very. I I mean it it used to be a, a sphere, right? So now it is like a very very stretched sphere. And. If I do this, you guys will be able to see that I have these controls here. So that helped me like a lot to create this hair. And at first I thought it would be so like super difficult to do this, but I, I, I thought about like using this transformer to kind of move the hair, you know, around. And it's almost like if I have a rigged version of the hair, but on the model, so this way it was super easy to put the like each strain on, on position, you know. So as you guys can see here, it's very easy to manipulate the each strain of the hair, and that helped me a lot to create this um, this shape. That I'm to be honest, I'm not quite used to create hair like this. Uh, like an image version of hair and stuff. So, yeah. So each one of those hairs, they have the same the same thing, and I can move it around like this. So let's say that I want to change the the position of of this this part of the hair. I can just come here and in a non-destructive way change the shape of the hair pretty quickly, you know, like this. And yeah, so it works for all the parts, as you guys can see. And I did this for every strand of hair, even the back, like the ponytail, it works in the same way. 
And the best thing about this is, let's say, uh, I, I don't need to create like every, every time that I'm going to create a strain, I don't need to create a sphere every time. So let's say that I started with this one right here, like this. And what I can do is that, is that I can duplicate this mesh. So where it is. So I can duplicate this and if I move it and go back to the to, to the deformer, I can still manipulate it using the deformers like this. So that's that's how I create like every single one of those air strains. Okay? It was easier than I than I thought it would be to create. But there's one thing that I should know thank it before I do this, but when I when I figured it out, it was already too late. As you guys can see, this geometry here, it has like a lot of polygons. It's like too high, too like too many polygons on this on this geometry. And because of that, my entire hair has like like um I don't know a lot more polygons that than it should be, you know, it should have. So I'm gonna delete this. And so it's too dense right now. It's it was great to to manipulate and create this shape, but it has like too much geometry for its own sake now. But when I realized that it was already too late and I already had the, the oh, like half of the hair lay, laid out and I and I said okay um, I'm gonna do like this and I can change just this afterwards when I you know on the future let, let I, I will let the Derek from the future handle with this but yeah I think it's a great technique and it's very easy to do so Um, what's up, Die Atlas? So, how did I create the hair? Yeah, I was, I was, I was explaining right now. This is actually a cylinder. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys with a, with a, with an, with, with an example right now. So, let me just close this. Uh, I'm gonna insert a sphere here. So, that's that's how I did this strand of hair. So I have this sphere right now. And what I did was I just changed it a little bit the scale of the sphere like this. To have like a to, so this way the sphere is a little bit closer from the from the shape that I wanted. Something like this. And then I put in this this position. And I did something like this. So in order to be able to manipulate the, the geometry in the same way that I was showing to you guys, there is we have this gear here on the left corner of the, the gizmo. And if we click in this, we have a bunch of different deformers here. And uh, the deformer that I used was the bend curve. With bend curve, uh, we're we are gonna have this like anchor points here where we are we are able to change the you know the shape of the sphere. And you you can actually use this with any shape that you want, actually. Um that's the just the way that I use to create the hair. So that's what I did. I just put it right here where I thought it would be the root. And then I start to manipulate the hair in order to get the the shape that I wanted, like this. And you can all you can even increase the number of um, 
anchor points that you have to manipulate your geometry like this you see if i put the if, if i push this anchor right here i can add a bunch of anchors to to the geometry but i think that less is more in this case you know because it's easier to manipulate using this so yeah i just put it on, on place like this and start to moving around like this and also other cool thing that we have here is that we can actually scale and change the deformation of uh each point you know so in, in order to make the like the very the tip of the hair like with a like having a better shape we can scale like this you see so I found that this is great actually to make this kind of design and I will try to create more hair like this. And yeah, so we can make the like the middle part thicker like this and so on. And once we have like a, the perfect uh, hair strand laid down, what we can do is we can actually we are let's say that we already have a, like the the final uh, mesh strain like the the strain hair of hair that we want what you can do is that you can duplicate this oops let me put this outside of the group right wow yeah too too many too many sub tools right now so yeah let's say that we already have the the final version of the hair that we want what we can do is you can duplicate this mesh and you can move it around like you can put it on the side and then you can access your deformer again and all the points are going to be on the same place so this way it will be super easy for you to like put it on the right position again uh, yeah like this and I think that you can do a bunch of different things like this even like a more like a hair for a collectible or something like this I think this I, I also think that this can work so yeah here it is, as you guys can see. Yeah, it's not that difficult. So yeah, that's how I did the the hair. Let me delete this now. <clears throat> so yeah, yeah, the Atlas. It's exactly like 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 a deformer, but inside of ZBrush. Uh, Frank, Eric, can you show me how you painted the eyes? Yeah. Yeah, sure, I can show you. It's, it's actually pretty, pretty simple to do. Let me show it to you right now. So, So I have these two spheres in here. <coughs> oh, sorry, guys. So I have this sphere here. I'm, I would just duplicate it. And well, since this one is already painted, I don't want this. So I'm going to remove the paint for the, from this one. I'm going to put the flat color material and I'm gonna fill the object. All right. So okay, I have no shader assigned to this to this those two spheres right here. Uh, when I'm doing eyes, one thing that I really like to do is to assign the toy plastic material to the 
to the object because we're gonna have like better reflection and things like this. So if we can here, we can look for the toy, toy plastic. I'm not where it is. Toy plastic. So here it is. And now what I'm going to do is I will assign the material to this to the eyes. All right. So I'm gonna use the fill object with the material option. Turn it on. Color fill object. So now this mesh has the toy plastic material assigned to it. Now I, I can go back to any shader that I want. So you see, now we have the, those reflect, reflections from the light on the eyes. And that's what, exactly what, what we want. And in order to paint the eyes as I did, the thing first, first, first of all, uh, you need to add, to turn on the RGB option here, and you want to make sure that you have Z add turn it off and RGB mode turn it on. All right. So to create those eyes, what I do is a, it's a very simple technique. Uh, first, I use a very dark color, like a very dark color like this. And I can paint like a sphere on the eye, like, like this. All right. So we already have like a very, a very nice, like anime eyes to this character. But what I try to do is uh, I also put like a kind of red color, brown color, I don't know. You can make it blue if you want. You can make it the color the, the way you want. Let's try a little bit like blue eyes. Like this, you see? Now, now she's she's looking like a say say Jin from D Dragon Ball Z. All right, so that's what you can do. Then I paint uh, with some color the middle of the eye, like this. See, and then I change to a very dark color again. And I paint the the middle of the eye like this. See, that that's basically all that I do. And you can use the same principle to create like very realistic eyes as well. But you know, you can add more strains and more like traces to the eye and make like a very very nice eye. Uh, I think it's very important to have an, like a, a, very, a nice eye assign it to the character when you are sculpting. I think it helps a lot, especially when there it is like a, a character like this. And since we don't have like real time shadows um, on the on ZBrush viewport, I like to fake the shadows from the upper part of the eye. So again, I will take like a dark color and we can fake the shadow painting just a little bit the upper part of the eye like this. See? So this way we have a little bit more depth for the for the eyes. So that's exactly the technique that I use it. And sometimes I like to take like a very like a red color, pink color, I don't know, and put on the corner of the eyes like this. And this one was too much, maybe a little bit, a little less than this. Yeah, like this. So yeah, that's how I do the eyes for the character. And again, you can use the same principle to create like a, 
very cartoon, cartoonish eye. Uh, if you put a little bit more work into it, you can make this like a very realistic eye, only using the paint painting work. All right. Yeah, no problem, Frank. Um, so right now, what 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 we are missing here? We need to create the like the bait monster that we have inside the capsule. And I, I, I don't know if you guys are able to, to see the, the concept artwork here on the right corner of the screen, but inside of the capsule, we have like this kind of Ghibli, Studio Ghibli character inside of the capsule here, like Totoro or something like this. So let's create this. All right, it's kind of a bear or something like this. Yeah, we have a like a creature here. So yeah, I'm gonna try to create something like that. So I'm gonna start with like from different different two, and then afterwards we can come back and insert this two on our shihiro model right right there all right so let me just drink some water here oh yeah so let's do this so right now zbrush is doing like an auto save here so this might take a while. Let's wait a little bit. Yeah, Frank, we have this creature inside of the capsule. Um, I'm gonna try to create something. Um, let's see. So yeah, we can start using this sphere here. Mm. Yeah, I need to make this a polymesh 3D. So here we go. And again, I don't know if you guys are able to, to see what's going on inside of the capsule, but I'm gonna try to create that character. So let's already create an eye to the creature, right? And I'm gonna use the same, same technique again. I'm gonna use the toy plastic, a white color, I'm going to use the mRGB this, this time and I'm going to use the fill object option. And now I can go back to the, to the shader and we can change for a very, like a kind of a yellow color to the character. So I'm gonna duplicate this and create like a shape for the body. And let's create Whoops. I'm gonna duplicate this again to create the arm. Yep, 
Yeah, I think it's something like this. We are in the weld, and now we have both arms. He has this very big cheeks, like this. Yeah. Yeah, so let's create some, let's create the ears for him. So I'm gonna duplicate this again to create the ear. Whoops. Can mirror and weld this. Yeah, it's already looking better this way. So let's let's create the the legs. Again, I can duplicate this sphere again. And we can create the legs. So this is going to be the babe inside of our capsule. Oops. Yeah. All right. So now we can work a little bit more on the head. Uh, I'm gonna use DynaMesh to this. So now I have a DynaMesh version of the mesh. And we can try to create like a nose and a, and a mouth for, for the character. Yeah, something like this. Make the cheek a little bit bigger.
yeah maybe we should paint those eyes so I'm gonna paint this eyes in the same way that I just did it Let me just paint the nose. So I need to increase my RGB intensity to use the few color option. I'm gonna use a few color on everything. Right here too. And let me just see something, just a minute. Just a minute, just looking to, I'm just searching for some happenings here. Yeah. I think something like this will work almost like a koala, right? Uh, if someone is new to the stream is thinking what what is this guy doing 
<laughs> I'm just doing this. This like creature for bigger project. All right, so stay tuned. Yeah, I'm not a very, I'm not a big fan of his. His face right now, so I'm, I'm just trying to find a way to make this look cool. So yeah. Um, I'm gonna duplicate this part again and I will just change the color to a pink color. Yeah, actually I think this, this is okay. And I can scale this down a little bit. Oops, a little bit more resolution here. And I think we are going to be good to go. Yeah. And, oh, I, for, I forgot about the eyes. Sorry guys. Again, I'm gonna reduce a little bit the resolution. And I think I, I need to add like a little little hand here. So let's insert uh, another sphere here. to create what would be the hands. For the character like this. And we can use the same that we use to create the hand, to create the, the feet. Like this. All right? that does not look like a baby at all. But 
he is going to be inside of our Bave capsule. I'm going to use Dynamesh again to the, for the body. And I think I need to change a little bit the size here. Yeah, so I think it's something close to this. Just the RGB option on. And now I think that I can combine those together. So let's do this. I will combine the body with the arm and leg. All right, merge and merge down. Merge and merge down. Yeah, we, we can also add the, the feet and hands to the to the mix, right? Merge down. Okay. Now that we have everything combined together, I'm gonna try to Oh, I forgot about the fit. Merge down. I I need since my model is too big, I need to increase the the size of my brush. So preference draw dynamic brush scale. I wanna put this to ten. Or maybe five, it's okay. All right. And I'm gonna try to change this, like try to give a little bit more curve to the to the character, almost as if he was, you know, like a, I don't know, like a, a babe inside of capsule. I don't know.
I want to add some shape to his face, but I don't want to to be too much. No. I want to be very subtle. Yeah, I think it's almost something like this. Yeah, I just painted a little bit the the eyes, so we have like a, a little bit more of definition to the shape. Yeah, I'm starting to to like him. I don't know, probably because I'm already watching, looking too much at him and now I'm starting to like him Yeah, I think that will work. I'm gonna change a little bit the size of the eye right now.
I don't know why, but I, I feel like in, on the drawing he has like this very, very big cheeks like this. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stay with this shape and I might change this later. So, yeah. So, let's 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 do a zero measure of this. Unless we can have a better, better mass resolution for this. All right. I think we can go even further than this. Yeah. Yeah, let's try another one. Yeah, this one's okay. So let's put the color again. And I think that I can work with this. And the body, we can, I think we can merge down the body, but I'm going to separate the, the hand and the feet from the rest of the body using the groups, group split option. And now I actually think that I can zero measure this together. I mean, then I mesh everything together with a little bit more resolution. And now we can zero measure this.
and we can do the same thing for this parts over here and Oh man, I, I forgot about the eater. I think it would be better to actually combine this together with the head. So let me com let me combine this, and now I can give a Dynamesh. And now we can try a zero mesh. Right, can try another one. Thank you, Frank. Thank you very much. What's up, Zirchen? He's a mouse. Yeah, I, I think he's a mouse, the, the creature inside the capsule. He probably is a mouse. Um, I'm gonna do the zero mesh again because I didn't like the result. Let's see. It seems like it lost the symmetry. I don't know why. Not liking this, so let's I'm having this very strange strip. Yeah, I think something like this. So I'm going to use zero measure on this part as well. So let me just. Yeah, I think that's it. So now we kind of have a... Now 
now we have a very very low poly geometry to handle. I, now I can combine everything together since we don't have any dynamic geometry. We can merge this down. Merge down, merge down, and merge it down. And so it's okay because now we have everything separated by polygroups. So if we need to change it, I don't know why, but if we need to change, it will be easier to do. So yeah, so let me insert this character in here. He's, he's quite big right now, but since we have everything together on the same sub tool, it will be easier to, to adapt him. So I was not like a big fan of him, like alone, but seeing him here with her, I think I think he's looking cool. Um, I don't I don't know if I'm able to to make a surface transparent on on the viewport of ZBrush. I really don't know about that, but it would be cool if I could. Mm. Where it is, my capsule. I shouldn't hey, name everything. Yes, here it is. So he's going to be right inside of the capsule, kind of floating on some kind of water here. Yeah, I need to fix his back. That shape is awful this way. I, yeah, need to make this better. Yeah, I'm gonna save this on a separated file. Um, All right. And I'm going to delete this. This one. And now I can insert the right one. Oops. So here we have it. Yeah, he's going to be inside of the the capsule. It would be great if I could make this transparent. 
on the viewport that would be super cool Uh, so that it's possible to create hard surface for for example like some armor from vanquish uh yeah totally possible you can create you can create basically anything here inside of zbrush uh, that includes uh like sci-fi hard surface armor for sure yeah you can create it uh with no problem at all sure uh the again as i said before when i was creating this i know this is very that's a very simple and basic shape but the principle behind it to create something as complex as sand armor it would be the same you know uh, the technique is basically the same and you can create like uh the scope of the shape and stuff and afterwards you can clean up here inside of zbrush and make the the shapes cleaner than uh with a good topology and everything you know so yeah it is possible to do it so all right Another thing that uh, actually I would need to do for, I, I would need to open the, the UVs for, for the character. So let's use the, the boots as an example to this. So if I if I need to open the UVs for for these boots here, and I need to it because uh, I'm planning on texturing this afterwards. So I'm gonna show you guys how I would do it. So I don't have any subdivisions for this mesh. First thing that I need to do just just to be easy for me um i'm gonna clone this mesh and i'm gonna work separated on this and i'm gonna delete the one side and i'm gonna use only one side on the right boat all right so since i already have like everything done and i did zero measure of everything and i have a kind of a clean topology here uh, I can use this polygroups um, on my advantage to open the UVs. And we're gonna do this right now. So first I'm gonna separate something. I'm gonna separate by polygroups where I would like to see the the cuts on my UVs. So usually this works pretty good. I like this on this one. this also have this shape here
All right, so I need to. I'm going to cut this back part here using the Z modeler. I can do the same for this. right so now what i can do is i can go to z plugins and i can go to uv master and i can select polygroups option here on the uv master and i'm gonna try to open like this to see what happens i'm gonna save this just in case I'm gonna read un unwrap. I can flat this to see. So yeah, I think this is this is a quite good UV for this model, and I can totally use this to do like very good textures, right? I'm gonna hit the unflat button right now, and I'm gonna copy the UVs from this model. And I'm gonna go to all the way to this model here. And I will paste the UVs here. So now if we go to the UV map, you can see that I already have the morph UVs here because we already have UVs that we copied from the other model. So if we morph the UVs, Here we have it. All right. So now I can mirror and weld, I guess. Yeah, then I just need to rearrange the, the layouts afterwards. All right. So again, let me just save this. So do you guys have any questions about anything about the process or something like this? Feel free to ask them. So yeah, and I'm going to do this again. But this time I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do this here on this model. Um so yeah, when you not in order to to you know to take your mesh inside of substance painter you need to have your uvs otherwise you you will not be able to paint anything inside of substance painter
so that's that's why I I you have to open the UVs of your model, you know, and it's easier to open the UVs when you have like a like a better topology. You can you can use the UV master to to open the UVs of a decimated mesh or actually any mesh that you want, but it will be a lot. You know, it's not going to be as easy as when you have like a let's say a nice topology like here, like we have here. You know, it's going to be a little bit difficult to to do it. But we, if you have like a good topology with good polygroups and stuff, you can you can you know open your UVs here inside of the brush, and then you can later you can take those UVs to a third part software and you can lay out it the way that you want, you know, and create packages the best way possible for you. But yeah, you have to to open the UVs to in order to be able to paint that that model on Substance Painter, for example. Yeah, you're welcome, man. So I'm gonna try to separate this where I thought the the cuts of the UV should be. Um, so I think that I painted some different parts here. So yeah, let me just separate this like this, right? So now I can use the Z modeler to create my polygroups. And now I can grow the selection. create those polygroups here and I can do the same thing again to the other parts again using the Z modeler I create those polygroups Then I select them and I grow the selection like this, right? Let's do this here. Again, same technique. I can use also the polygroup function. And then I will already create a, a different polygroup here to this one. I think this one's okay. And to this one, yeah, I know what I can do here. I can select the side side part and 
and I can grow the selection. This, yeah. And I can, can cut this again. This, I can also cut this here. Right, same thing here. And I just keep like creating those those cuts, you know. So the ideal the ideal thing here it would be to to do the same technique that I'm doing here with those parts on everything to you know to create better better UVs but just for the sake of the live I'm gonna unwrap everything right now but I'm gonna I'm I will work on the clone for this. I'm gonna hit the unwrap, unwrap button here. Let's see what ZBrush created to me. Okay, so as you guys can see, the parts that I didn't cut, that I didn't create the polygroups to kind of orientate ZBrush where I would like to, to have the cuts, I have those miscutted pieces here. You see? So that's that's something that I that I don't like when I'm creating a model uh at work or for production, you know. I really I, I don't like too much of that, that UV. And that's happening because on those parts of the model I didn't I didn't separate it with different poly groups, you know to make the, the cut process easier to ZBrush. So as you can see, those bigger UVs here, those bigger pieces, those are the ones that I cut it using the polygroups. And those one, those ones were, they are working like pretty good, you know? But other ones, the, the other ones that I didn't use the, the cuts uh, using polygroups, uh, look how messy the UVs are. And that's not good because your textures are going to be like super stretched. Um, yeah, it's not going to, that's not going to look good. It can, it can even, you know, it can, you, you can actually work with that, but yeah, I don't think that's a good practice. But anyway, let me unflip in this and we can copy these UVs, go back to the original and we can paste the UVs. And now if we look here at the UV map, we're going to have the morph UV options for this model here. So let's say that we had some kind of a paint job on this model, like a poly paint. Now we can export the, the textures for, for this model because we have the UVs here. So we, we would be able to go here on texture map and 
I don't know, create new textures from polypaint. And now we have this texture here. And any details that we might have painted here, like hand painted, it would be exported to this texture. Okay. So, yeah. So now what I have to do is to create this, this polygroups for all the parts of the model in order to in order to export my model with textures and stuff. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to export the I'm going to export the model and finalize the topology and everything. And after that, this model will be rigged. And this model, we're going to have like controls and everything. So an animator will be able to, to animate this, hopefully. And yeah, but in terms of sculpting and, you know, the actual actual modeling process um yeah it's i think it's done i think um i am pretty happy with the result right now and i'm ready to go to the to the other part of the process that is to send this to a, to a rigger so he can create a rigger to this character and I will also I, I will also make like blend shapes for the for her face and things like this so this way we'll be able to create some expressions to her and yeah so I think that's it so I don't know if you guys have any more questions for today how are you guys holding in there All good, no questions at all. So yeah, so I think that's it. All right guys, so I think that's it for today. Um, I think I'm, I'm done with this character and at least on the, in terms of modeling. And yeah, from now on, are going now it's like different different steps of the pipeline, like texturing and rigging and you know. So, but in terms of ZBrush, I think I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, Frank, yeah, can you can you show me how to group split? Oh yeah, sure. Let me show you. So, okay, we can use the capsule for this. So as you can see here, I have like two mesh combined together. They are the same subto right now, right? And What I can do now that if let, let's say that I want to separate the glass, the glass part from the, from the bottom part, I'm going to show how we, how to do this. But before that, let me just save this model. Save.
Yeah. So here we go. So we have like two meshes in here, like the glass part and the bottom part. And we have like everything right now is on the same poly group. Okay. So what you can do, you can go here and look for poly groups and you can press the auto groups option. With that, um, all your separated matches, they are going to like each one of them will be assigned a different poly group, a different color, as you can see here, right? And you can go here, like sub, uh, on the tool sub, on the tool palette, under poly groups, auto groups, all right? And now what you want is you want to group split. So as you can see, I have this here on my custom sub menu, but I think you can also have this here on polygroups. Let me just find where this is. I need to find where is this option. It's I'm using this custom menu for so, so much time that sometimes I don't remember where things are. All right. If anyone on the chat remembers the correct location for this, for the group split button, Let's say under polygraphs. Yeah, I can find it. Split or oh, here it is. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I, I mean, I've been using the my custom sub palette for so long that I sometimes I forgot forget where the the buttons actually are. But yeah, I'm sorry about that. You can go here on sub tools, and then we have this split uh, sub palette here. So first you went to polygroups, auto groups, right, and then sub tool. And then we have this sub palette here called split. And then you can press groups split. This is going to separate each one of your model on different sub tools. Watch this. So now I have the sub tool for the glass and the sub tool for the metal part. All right? Yeah. So I hope this answers I hope this answers your question. Okay, Frank, let me know. Uh, what's up, John Michael? Really? How are you, man? Thank you very much. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, no problem, Frank. Uh, glad to help. So, yeah, guys, I think that we are done with this one. Uh, I, I just would like to show you guys again an early hander that I did uh, of the character. And yeah, uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I will keep working on this character uh, a little bit longer, uh, doing all the other parts of the process that I need in order to send the file to the to the Higer. And yeah, but for now, uh, I think I, I think I'm done. All right, and next week we are going to create something something new. Uh, I am still. 
thinking about what we are going to work on. I have some some ideas already, and I actually have a lot of things that I that I that I want to do. But yeah. Let's see next week. Uh, all right. All right, Frank, thank you very much. And thank you guys for staying tuned. And again, next week, something, something new. Let's create another thing. And I also, I, I, I'm still working on the, I'm still working on the, that droid character from the like first streams that I did. And as soon as I have the, the model finish it, um, I'm going to show it to you guys how it's looking. All right. So just hide this. Yeah. So that is the result of the last, the past streams. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this and I see you guys on the next one. Ciao.